Welcome to Close Up Radio, where our hosts, Doug Llewellyn and Jim Masters, engage today's top thinkers from around the world to bring you information, inspiration, and thought-provoking ideas you can put to use in your personal and professional life right now. Covering a broad range of topics, Close Up Radio digs deep to discover what makes today's top thinkers tick. Close Up Radio, where ideas matter. And now, here's today's host, Doug Llewellyn. Well, hello, everybody. We nice. To, we, <laughs> it's nice to have you back with us today. I'm Doug Llewellyn. What a pleasure to have you. We're going to learn something really fascinating. That's what I started to say. Uh, we're going to learn about a subject called neurosculpting. I don't know if you, maybe you know about it. If you do, you're ahead of me because I don't know anything about it. Neurosculpting is described as a five-step meditation process that can strategically help an individual release the grip of old patterns and entrain their brain to create more new and more supportive patterns, habits, and behaviors. That's the basic description of it. But we're going to be talking to the founder of the Neurosculpting, or rather, she teaches it, and it's uh, Neurosculpting Institute in Denver, Colorado. I'm going to talk to uh, Lisa Wimberger. Lisa may not have found it. We're going to find out from her. Let her tell us. And anyway, bottom line is, it's the fusion of brain science and mindfulness. As, well, as I said, it's a five-step meditation process, and Lisa says that she's the founder of the Neuroscoping Institute, physical and virtual institute with students all over the world. That's how it's described. It's a process of mental entrainment, and I mentioned that to you, and meditation to regulate your nervous system. That really is the best way to put it. It's a focus that can be applied to anything from helping people calm themselves or move out of their old patterns. For example, prior to neurosculpting, Lisa had suffered from a Caesar condition since she was a teenager and the result of being struck by lightning on her 15th birthday. And unlike epileptics, Lisa's seizures stemmed from her brain stem, so there was no medication to help treat that. And worse, one of her nerve was hypervigilant so that her seizures were very extreme. And the doctors told her she had a stress condition but should not have been a stressed person. She had followed meditation practice since she was 12 years old, and in her 30s, her condition had progressed to threatening her life. It was that serious. So I'm going to break off the story at that point and, and bring Lisa on and let her explain how this process has helped her and how she is now helping other people who have similar conditions and many other conditions as well, because they can all be helped by neurosculpting. Lisa? Welcome. Nice to have you with us today. This is Lisa Wimberger in Denver, Colorado. How you doing, Lisa? I'm great. It's great to be talking with you. Well, thank you. Hey, it's great for me to talk to you because you know all about this and I don't know anything about it. But describe for me a little bit about your condition. Your condition obviously was quite tragic and quite bad. Um, I mean, I, I guess it's a miracle you survived after being struck by lightning at the young age of 15, Right. Yeah, you know, when I when I talk about my life, it sounds like I'm a fantasy, but uh, I was hit, uh, the side of the house got hit, and I was leaning against a metal handle, so the lightning came out through me versus coming in to my body from, from a direct hit. So um, it was at the base of the spine, and it was very painful, and uh, another child who was standing next to me, we were shoulder to shoulder. He was hit as well. Uh, and we kind of really didn't know what happened. But very shortly after the, the hit, probably about a week later, I started having blackouts. Um, I thought I was fainting. Um, but these blackouts started progressing to very debilitating where I would lose consciousness and I would end up on the floor sometimes unable to move for hours, sometimes unable to hear or speak, uh, sometimes even not being able to hold urine or bowels. It was just an absolute mess. And I had no idea what was happening to me. But as the years progressed, they got much worse to the point where they were stopping my heart. And I was going into, you know, I don't know, seconds to sometimes minute, a minute or more of no pulse, no heartbeat, um, and I very fortunately 
happen to have one of these grand mal tonic seizures in a doctor's office very serendipitously when I was 30. And he, I woke up on the table to a loaded needle of atropine, which is kind of like the scene mm-hmm. out of the movie Pulp Fiction. It was right. that moment. I opened my eyes. He's got this needle of atropine, and he's shaking because this was a routine exam. He did not expect me to flatline in the middle of an exam. Um, he told me what had happened. I was completely incapacitated. Uh, they sent me to the emergency room. They had to do all sorts of tests. And they came back and said, you're not epileptic. You, you have normal brain functioning. And that was the, the gift of the diagnosis was they told me that this was a cranial nerve disorder, that I had this hypervigilant nervous system likely exacerbated by some traumatic event, uh, and that stress and dehydration would induce these seizures. And at that point, the game changed for me because I had grown up meditating. There was no reason at all I should have been stressed. Life was fairly manageable. And so I thought either I'm meditating all wrong or I could be meditating more strategically if I understood my neurobiology. So that's really what led me to go study neuroscience was I needed to save myself. I needed to fix what was happening because they were getting so bad that I I think I had documented flatlined on three occasions, but I can tell from my own experience it was probably more than that. Um, and so I really needed an intervention. So I learned all I could about my brain and my nervous system and what it needed and what it wasn't getting. And I decided I would backwards engineer my meditation process because I knew meditation was valuable. It just wasn't valuable enough the way I was using it. So I I backwards engineered it and I said, look, science is telling me my brain needs all of these different kind of um, entrainments, different kind of uh, focuses to actually perform the way it needs to. So if I add in all of these steps into this meditation process, perhaps I actually get to my nervous system without it resisting me, and perhaps I could change this pattern, this, this response pattern to fear. Because neuroscience was telling me I could, and I believed it. So I played around with um, very regimented steps that felt kind of like the fusion of meditation, hypnosis, creative visualization, but all of it I was deriving from my studies in neuroplasticity and learning what the brain needs to hear and what the brain needs to um, receive in order to let you in to change a pattern in the first place. And lo and behold, after... Uh, coming up with this this process, I was my own guinea pig, and after about eight months of using it and practicing and rehearsing a different response to the onset of a seizure, uh, a seizure moment came, and I thought I was gonna, you know, I thought I was gonna die, and the meditation script I had been rehearsing for like eight months kicked in on autopilot. And I interrupted my own seizure. I didn't have one. My body went into a completely different response. And I never had another seizure again since that day. I've had moments where I could feel the onset and then it just disappears. And I have learned in that moment, I entrained something new in my nervous system. I I changed the pattern. It worked. I was surprised, I was elated, I was blown away, and at that point I thought, well, whatever this process is, whether it was a gift from the universe, God, myself, whatever you want to call it, it saved my life, and I now have to be in service to it. So I literally quit my job and put myself in service to sharing this work with whoever could have it. And really where I started was with police officers. So I became a consultant at police agencies, bringing this technique to them 
to help them manage their nervous systems because somewhere deep inside of me, I thought if we could get tools of physical, mental, and emotional regulation to people who have their hand on a loaded gun, then that's yeah. a good thing. And so that was kind of where it all started. Wow. And doctors really didn't, couldn't find the answer for you? You knew they wasn't no. epileptic. That's as far as they were able to tell you? Is that right? That's cor- they told me I was vasovagal, which means my 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve, is hypervigilant. And when they tell you you're vasovagal, pretty much they tell you to stay hydrated and put salt in your diet and don't get up too fast. But they actually don't tell you how to do vagal toning for the nervous system. And it's only yeah. in the last, I would say, two years that anyone has come up out with protocols or research around how to actually recondition that cranial nerve. And it's much more understood now than it was when I got my diagnosis and for sure was not understood at all 50 years ago when other people were having vasovagal seizures. Wow. So, and, and I understand you've been, you've been meditating since you were like 12 years old. So you've been meditating for a long, even longer even before you were, you know, this incident happened to you at the age of 15, you were already a, an inexperienced meditator. Um, that's, that's kind of amazing. Where did the, the subject of neuro, not neuroplasticity, but neurosculpting come up with you? Did, who introduced you to the subject? How did you find out about well, it? Well, I, I invented it, honestly. So I was learning neuroscience. I was learning about neuroplasticity, and when I came up with this five-step meditation protocol, I started teaching it. Someone told me, Lisa, do you need a name for this? Because I kept calling it meditation. And this woman who was taking my workshop said, this is not meditation. This is something more. This is something more strategic, deeper, and faster, and you need to find a name for it. And I, it hadn't even occurred to me to try to name it and because this was just the process I created for myself, and I was just sharing it. So after she inspired me to call it something different, I literally went into a meditation, and I asked myself, what is it that I am teaching? And then the word neurosculpting came. And so I started calling it neurosculpting because what, what we're doing with this process is we are crafting and sculpting new neural patterns. And so I thought, oh, it's neurosculpting. And so I started calling it that. And shortly after that, uh, a very respected person in the self-help industry um, heard about it. And she said to me, Lisa, you need to trademark that because it's so good that if you don't, I'm going to take it. And she, of course, said it tongue-in-cheek, but it was coming yeah. from someone I respect. I respected her. And so I thought, oh, okay, I'll trademark it. I had no plans at all for this to become what it has become. I only planned and still only ever plan to help people. And whatever it's supposed to be, it will be. And so it kind of named itself. I followed people's passion around it and took steps and now we're a global virtual institute I have all over the world I have 60 certified to teach this all across the country and one in Australia I'm trademarked in different continents it it did its own thing and I'm just a vessel to help people find a way to regulate when they feel like there's no hope that's an amazing story so let's explore the possibility of who is suffering from what and how they can benefit from neuroplasticity. You have a great website. I would encourage anyone who is interested, and I think it's, it's important to hear what kinds of issues people might have who could benefit from this. But anyway, your website is neurosculptinginstitute.com. I know it's long, but it's pretty easy to spell, neurosculptinginstitute.com. Again, Lisa Wimberger is the founder of this. She discovered this and perfected this. Talk about 
I guess the thing to talk about is what you do when someone comes to you or they log on. I know you, you treat people in person if they're in the Denver area, but otherwise you will work with clients. And as you pointed out, you have clients literally all over the world. Uh, you work with them on Zoom and Skype and things of that nature. Um, mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about what you do to treat people. And even more, more important than that is what are the kinds of conditions do people have who can benefit from, from yeah. neuro how do you answer that? It's a, it's a broad range. So the first thing I would say is, you know, I, m- my primary role is to teach people how to use this meditation process for self-regulation. But here's the thing. If you understand your nervous system, then you understand that a dysregulated nervous system is the foundation for all diseases. So no matter what your disease, your ailment, your imbalance, a piece of it, will be a dysregulated nervous system. So right out of the gate, we can help mitigate a lot of symptoms in anything from stress conditions to chronic pain to mental imbalances to physical issues to inflammatory conditions. Any of those kinds of things will have a dysregulated nervous system as a piece of it. So what we do is we teach people how to regulate their nervous system through meditation, and that actually helps mitigate various degrees of what they might be suffering from. Now, I have seen people go from zero to feeling like they are symptom-free uh, with this process, but I would never say that this is the healing process or the cure. I would say that this meditation process is a critical support for any human being, especially human beings, in any kind of imbalance because the nervous system runs the whole show. So if you have inflammation, if you have a viral disease, if you have a mental imbalance, then your nervous system is completely and wildly out of homeostasis and it needs regulation so that the other things you're doing, like maybe Western medicine and therapy and all of those things, they have a solid foundation to settle upon. So we really propose that neurosculpting is a support process for all other treatments that you're getting as well. Um, I have clients, I have, we have a spinal cord injury and a traumatic brain injury program. So we have clients who are paralyzed, who have traumatic brain injury that need a lot of emotional and mental regulation. I have even seen quadriplegic move paralyzed digits, their fingers, after neurosculpting. And I have those videos on my YouTube channel. Um, uh, there's a YouTube channel called Lisa Wimberger, and I have a playlist of my work with paraplegics and quadriplegics. Never in a million years did I think neurosculpting could do that, but it did. And you can all see that on on these videos. But most of our clients are in the spectrum of stress conditions and chronic pain and inflammatory conditions. And they come to a session. I have them describe what they're experiencing. And then I create a very specific neurosculpting meditation for them to help them get acquainted with their nervous system, to help understand what balance feels like, to be able to gauge what their nervous system is doing, and to dial it down. And then from there, as that client progresses, we can go deeper and look at, oh, are there mental patterns and belief systems you have that are also speaking through the nervous system, and maybe we can uncouple those patterns from your body's day-to-day life. And then that gets into a little bit of the belief systems people have change as well over time. It's quite profound. We don't, we don't limit who we're willing to teach meditate. So I never say no. I never say, yes, this will heal you, but I never say no. So when a person comes to me and they say, do you have experience with bulimia? I'll say, no, I don't, but I'm absolutely happy to help teach you how to regulate your nervous system, and maybe you'll find a way to connect that to, to supporting your healing journey through bulimia. So it's, it's a very interesting thing for me because a lot of times I get clients um, with very complex cases, and we experiment, and we meditate, 
and they show me how it works for them. It's quite fascinating. Wow. You know, you you mentioned the term, you said, for people who don't understand their nervous system. And I was just thinking, you know, I bet 99% of the people in the world don't understand their nervous system. Who understands their nervous system? I don't, I don't understand you, mine. I don't have a clue how it you works. You know, it's, it's unbelievable that I didn't even know where, actually literally where my stomach was until I saw a cadaver exhibit at a museum. And then I thought, how ridiculous that I am born with a mammalian body and I do not get a user manual. I don't know where my organs are. I don't know what my nervous system is doing. I don't know that my thoughts affect it. And, and I don't know how to go in and change that. And that should not be the case. We should be learning in school as children. We, we have that song like, you know, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Well, where's the rest right. of the song? Um, we have these amazing, miraculous bodies that are changing in each and every moment based on our experience and our thoughts, and we have no idea what they're doing. And so for me, I want a user manual for my mind and my body, and that's what neurosculpting has given me. This is really kind of very impressive. Um, as you point out, if you go on your website – you will see you can download a free book all about it called Neuroplasticity, and you can begin learning all about brain training for a better you, and all you have to do is log on to the website to get that. Um, tell me a little bit about There are a lot of people who meditate, obviously. Uh, tell me a little bit about the, the process of meditating under what you're doing here, under neuroplasticity. Yes. So I'm trained in a bunch of different meditation styles, None of them are like neurosculpting. So meditation usually entails sitting in a quiet space, relaxing your mind, observing your thoughts, and sort of letting things go. Neurosculpting is is the like rolling up your sleeves to go in and do the work. It's a different kind of feeling. So what we do is we first we condition the brain to let down its guard, and we do that by convincing it it's safe. The brain is never going to let you in until it believes it's safe. So you can sit there with your eyes closed all day long hoping to let something go, but if you haven't convinced your brain it's safe, it will never do that for you. So the first step is to convince it it's safe, and we have techniques for that. The second step is to harness direct focused attention and amplify it because the brain starts to then really pay attention and value things differently. And when it values things differently because it's paying attention, it makes it more important so it will store it in your memory deeper so your nervous system can access it easier. So we, we boost focused attention, and then we go scan the body and find where is their tension, where is their contraction, and are there any associated thoughts with that? Does that gut lump in your gut happen to go with the thought of I'm unworthy or I'm a sick person? So we look at how the body's responding and the associated thoughts. And then we start using a bilateral brain stimulation technique so that we start undoing the way the body is gripping that thought. We start softening the body in the midst of a negative thought, or we start entraining the body to a positive thought either way. And then we mark it with um, anchor movements, somatic movements with hands and uh, fingers so that we have a body experience. And this process then over time gives people um, ways to practice it. So most of the meditations are generally like 20 minutes long. They're not long and and difficult, uh, and you move through the meditation, you lay the groundwork in your nervous system with a, with a brain that's paying attention and letting you in, and then you exercise parts of the meditation throughout your day by repeating your hand gestures, and you start giving gentle exercise to that new pattern daily. Even in between meditations, all you have to do is use your hand gestures, much like hypnosis has 
post-hypnotic triggers, neurosculpting has post-meditation anchors. And so it's very pragmatic and very practical. And you can do this by yourself in your own home. You just have to know how to do it and, and what you, the Co- intentions correct. are, right? Correct. And you have to know what the steps are. Or you could just download some meditations off the website and press play. And once you um, get the flow of the meditation, then you can eventually guide yourself through any meditation you want because you kind of have felt the flow. Um, so it's very user-friendly. We teach people. My goal Ultimately, my goal is to, as a student and a client, my goal is to never see you again because I don't want you (laughs) relying on me. I want you to go home and do the homework and be self-empowered. So my goal is to, I'm a teacher. I'm I'm not a medical practitioner. I'm a teacher. So if I can teach you how to be self sufficient with this process, then I have reached my goal. And, that, and then you go off and you find all sorts of ways to manage your mind, body, and your physical symptoms all on your own. And that is my happy place. That's my happy place. That's your goal. Let me ask you a quick question. Uh, have you heard from, from some of the, the, your students or clients, whatever, uh, who've, who've done this and learned it and who've benefited from it, like the way you benefited? Absolutely. We ha- I have two young children who came to me with seizures and their parents reached out uh, two years after we stopped working together and their children are seizure free. Uh, I have my quadriplegic who now moves her fingers. Uh, We have people who have been addicted to Oxycontin and heroin are substance free. I have people with traumatic brain injury who have healed and regulated so much they're now teachers of this neurosculpting process. Um, yeah, it's unbelievable that what, what happens, and, and, and it takes work, right? Anything sure. worth changing takes the time and investment. So, so it's not a pill. It's a practice, and that means if you invest every day, you will get better at it. And that's the same with neurosculpting. I love you, the way they put it. It's not a pill, it's a practice. Basically, how long does it take doing this to really feel some effect? I'm sure it varies person to person, but how would you answer that? Yeah, everyone is different. I would say this. Um, uh, I've seen people go a whole year and have small but noticeable changes. I've seen people see changes in two weeks. It depends. Here's the key. The key with neuroplasticity is repetition. That's the golden rule. Repetition is better than duration. So if you have 40 minutes a week to invest in your neurosculpting practice, it is better to do it 10 minutes a day for four days than to do it one day a week for 40 minutes. So repetition makes the difference in how fast people can, can regulate. Um, and that's the same with the gym, right, and your muscles. You don't go to the gym yeah. one day a week for You're five right. hours. You want to disperse right. that. Listen, Lisa, this has been absolutely fascinating. You're, you really are a great teacher of this subject. You explain it so well. Uh, I just want, I wish we had more time to talk about this. I'm sure anybody who may be suffering from something, they don't, don't even know what it is, uh, should explore this. Uh, and the way to do it is to go to your website, neurosculptinginstitute.com, and learn about neurosculpting. There's a great video on there. You can see a session uh, on, the, on the website, and I know you have stuff on YouTube. There's just a wealth of information, and you are a great teacher and a great guest. Thank you so much for being here to tell us about it. Lisa Wimberger in Denver, Colorado. Thanks, Lisa. Enjoyed it so much. Thank you. Okay? Thank you so much, Doug. You have a great day. Thank you, Lisa. I will, and you too, everybody.